Hello, so this evening we're going to take a look at a new aircraft that's appeared in Microsoft Flight Simulator from Got Friends. It's about £30, which is probably about $35. It's called the PZL-104 Wilga 80. It's from Poland. And you can see it's actually been modelled really, really nicely. And everything works on it. So you might argue that this is study level. Even though it's such a small aeroplane, there's actually quite a lot to it. So we're going to jump in and have a look at it in a moment. But you will notice as well, there's some custom scenery around me here. This scenery actually comes with the aircraft. So this particular model that has been replicated here is actually housed in this real hangar. So one of the parking positions you can start from is inside this hangar. So you can actually wheel the aircraft out of the hangar. Okay, so if we go and get inside the aircraft, you can see it's absolutely wonderfully modelled throughout you know everything is very good and everything works you know every switch every knob every dial works so it makes it really really nice if we go and look around even the things in the back the stowage you can actually via the clipboard functionality that i'll show you in a moment you can put them outside you can play the guitar and you can set up the barbecue and have a beer it's quite bizarre um okay B before we get sidetracked with any of that Let's have a look through what we have to do to get this thing started. So the first thing we do is go and make sure that the gust lock has been removed. And you can see the gust lock down here. So I'm going to remove it from the joystick. And then we go, I'm going to use control keys on the way around. And I'm actually following a checklist that I've written up. So I'll put the checklist in the notes of the video. So we're going to press control on one, which gives us this kind of view over everything. And we're going to go and clip on, click on the clipboard over here and pull it out and make sure what we want is selected so we'll leave the engine realism on we'll leave smoke generator off notice I said you could have things like lanterns hammocks cargo and all kinds of things so we can then um, to control the chocks you just use the parking brake okay and we can refill the start air bottle which is over here Oh, sorry, that's a fire extinguisher, sorry, but there is a, a start air system. So kicking the engine over uses um, compressed air. Okay, so we can put the clipboard away now. We don't need it. And okay, we look further down the list. We've done everything we want with the, the cockpit. We're going to move the mixture to rich, which I've just done with a, a, on my throttles. We're going to move the propeller condition you will notice you've got the throttle here and propeller condition is the smaller lever although it's not actually labeled in the cockpit so we're going to push that all the way forwards okay and then we get into the real meat of start or getting the plane ready so we're going to go overhead so i'm going to press control and seven to make that happen we turn the battery to on okay so you saw the amperage drop there instrument lights to on so inst lights it's called i'm gonna i'm still a little bit at sea with this with finding out where things are around the cockpit so ultraviolet okay we're looking for both of these to be honest so these go to 100 percent. yeah so you move them all the way around using the mouse to do them and there's the instrument lights over here as well it uses ultraviolet for many of the lights it looks really cool in the dark um, dashboard brightness, yes we've done that. Nav lights to on. So we find the nav lights, which are somewhere in here, there they go. Navig position lights. Oil pressure to on. And oil pressure is there. Fuel pressure to on. Oil air temp to on. Then on the floor, we press control 6 to look down at the, fl the floor. We open the valve for the air pressure that will kick the engine over. Then we go and look in the centre of the floor. And here's where you can see the fuel tank selection. So we move that to left. OK. And we prime. You just prime it a few times, basically. Um, let me go back overhead and we turn the fuel on, which is somewhere around here. Uh, fuel pump on. Starter to on. 
this is not the actual starter this is the the, sh the spark shower system so when we do start it it will sh it will shower sparks across the the magnetos and then i'm just trying to get my bearings again magnetos to one and two so if we come and look down in the cockpit magnetos is down here and we roll that around to one and two we make sure the parking brake is on which it is now and we hit the starter button so we uncover the starter button and the engine is running okay this is quite a noisy aeroplane so at this point you would go and close the door because obviously during that startup you might have done pushback you might have shouted clear through the door and then you close the door once it's running let's go and check the noise levels because yeah this is a noisy sound so so we'll just turn it down a bit so you can hear me over it okay so now we go back overhead we turn that starter back off we turn that fuel pump back off and we go back down to the floor and we close this back up then we go back overhead we turn the generator to on anti-collision light to on so anti-collision light there it is stall warning to on ADF to on radio to on turn indicator to on Art artificial horizon to on direct gyro to on then back on the front panel we enable the magnetic compass which is here we uncage the artificial horizon which you do by plunging this in we turn the volume knobs on the radios if they're not already on so they were already on but we can also turn the um, transponder on and landing lights to on which is down here and we are pretty much ready to go now so come off the parking brake flaps to 50 percent the flaps are this enormous lever yeah so you can see everything's animated and all works nicely you have these nice shades as well that you can pivot down so let's go and taxi out and see how we get on shall we see how this plane actually flies so i'm just going to go and calibrate the altimeter while we're here as well just taxi out to the runway or should i say the patch of grass <laughs> have a look at the outside while we the sounds in it are absolutely brilliant okay there's our runway so full throttle You have to be ready on the rudder when the tailwheel does come off the ground. The plane will kick sideways quite dramatically. But once it's in the air and you, you remove the flaps, it's actually really, really nice to fly. Visibility is obviously very, very good. Let's go and have a fly around and see how it behaves. We'll get a little bit of altitude. Let's open the engine up, get some altitude and try some stalls just to see how it behaves. It's really nice having the custom scenery actually. Because you, you, know, you get some good low level scenery nearby to fly around. There's a really good, you can, obviously you can see the, the field we took off from. 
there's a really good visual indication of where you took off from in that there's a field with bales all over it right next door which is really useful you know when you're trying to get your bearings to come back you see them down there and smoke comes out of the chimneys of the houses okay so let's try some we'll try a power on stall first so let's view forwards notice the um, attitude indicator is a bit backwards okay it's trying to drop the right wing there goes the stall warning sounds like a dinner bell at a school let's pull it right up and it's dropped the right wing so I've cut the throttle right back so we don't accelerate too hard okay let's try a power off stall this time so we'll climb up a little bit more So with power on it dropped the right wing and it's done the same again. I wonder what it does in a turn. So that was in level flight. So let's go and do a right turn, climbing turn. And cut the engine and see what happens. Yeah, it just tucks under but it's very responsive as soon as you dip the nose and get some speed back you get control it won't really try and tumble well, I don't think it will should we give it a try let's get some speed up first interestingly it says um, somewhere in the cockpit do not do corkscrews or uh, it is prohibited to perform aerobatics and corkscrews it's probably just for structural integrity reasons but if we try it yeah it's, it behaves but it was going to try and go into a spin then okay let's go and find the airfield and come back obviously you can see you've got some really nice instruments around the cockpit you've got um, a nav radio you've got all the instruments for that you've got very clear engine gauges which are great vertical speed very good temperature gauges obviously indicated airspeed altitude it is interesting that the attitude indicator doesn't behave as you might imagine in many other aircraft but you can't have everything I guess it's kind of interesting that it's different okay let's see if we can find the airfield again So we're looking for that patch of green and the field with the bales. Thankfully it's a nice clear day, so we've got half a chance. If in doubt, I will pop open Little Nav Map and we'll have a look and find out where we are. I'm not quite sure how far we've flown from the airstrip. <coughs> Excuse me. We're on the on the point of stalling here. Just open the engine up. Okay, let's let's resort to the map. We have gone south. So we've got northwest then to get back to the airfield. So let's have a look at this. You'll notice this is a gyro compass. It'll be interesting to find out if this has drifted far from the binnacle compass as well. So we're coming around to northwest. Let's drop back down on the way. There's the field over there. It's perfect. So we'll circle in, come in over the bales and land. Now give us an opportunity to taxi the aircraft as well. Actually, where is the wind from? Let's have a look. 
as you know we need to come in the opposite end so we're gonna do a direct approach It's worth saying you've got full control over things like carb heat and things like that in the aircraft. They're very easy to control. You've got cylinder head cooling. Oh, I forgot to do that. Completely forgot. I've missed it off my checklist. So we've nearly killed the engine. Because if I jump outside, we forgot to open the vents on the engine. Thankfully, it's an absolutely freezing cold day today in the UK which is why I got away with it. It is literally a sub-zero outside. So I've probably, by pure luck, saved the engine. That's um, a solar farm down here that's been modelled as part of the scenery, which is quite cool. Okay, so we're a little bit high. wanting to come in on this grass strip here so we'll do a left turn in a moment and circle back towards the, the airfield go for some flaps Notice how much drag that imparted, the airspeed fell off very quickly. Okay, there's the airstrip directly in front of us. <coughs> so we'll go for full flaps. Yeah, even descending at this angle, look, it's decelerating. We sp press space we can see up over the nose Raise the flaps. Come back to where we started from. You will notice there are some other aircraft in the hangar, which is quite cool. Obviously this aircraft won't fit in there this way around, you'd have to pull it in backwards. So There you go, hopefully you enjoyed that. So this is the Wilga. It's this fantastic little Polish aeroplane. And I think it's really, really nice. It's good fun. So if we go and turn off some of the power. Turn off all the things that we just switched on. There we go. So it's the gyro that's making all the noise. And turn all these lights off. Obviously, I'm not doing things quite in the correct order here. We're shutting things back down, but it's not too difficult. Anyway, hopefully you enjoyed that. Let's have a quick look before we leave it and put some of the things outside. So if we open this door again, so it opens the door and let's go and put some of these things outside. So you do it via the clipboard. So we say uh, unpack the hammock and the lantern and the cargo and we don't want the pilot and the put the chocks back in place. We can do that with the parking brakes as well and the pitot covers can go back on. So then if we look outside, we see the stuff that we got out is on the floor now by the aircraft. Let's try advancing time to see how this lights up things on the ground. It's very cool, isn't it? 
So if we go to the drone camera, let's go and change the speed of the drone camera so we can actually use it properly. So in the showcase mode, we change the drone speed down to one. Okay, and then close that. And then we should find, oh, it's still very fast. There's a bug here in Flight Sim. It doesn't always take the drone speed. Yeah, it's forgotten it, look. And now it's taking it as zero. There's a really nasty bug with that. And you can't move accurately with the mouse. Three will have to do. There we go. So, if we move ourselves down here, you can get drinks from the cooler, I think. Oh, you have to be on the other view. Sorry. So what we would do is come out here with our flashlight and you can get a, a drink out <laughs> and you can swirl it around and you can click on the guitar and then you can actually play it. It puts this display up of the notes. Oh dear, you can even play with a fishing rod and things like that, so you get the fishing rod out. So if you're near the river, you can mess around with it. And I'm not sure the hammock really does anything. but Oh, that just gets the hammock in and out. But yeah, isn't it fun, though, to be able to do you know a few little Easter egg things like that? And there's little bits and pieces like that hidden all over the aeroplane. But if we actually go around and have a look at it, it's remarkably well done. It really, really is. Let's go and raise the light level again, just so we can see it in a bit more detail. And we'll wander around the aeroplane. There we go. But yeah, they they really have done a, a really, really nice job on it. Have a look around some of the joints. It's very, very good modelling. So yes, there you go. This is the Wilga in Microsoft Flight Simulator. It The flight model is lovely. The functionality of everything inside the cockpit is really good. It flies really well. And it's just great fun. So if you were looking for this kind of aeroplane, this might be one of the best ones. Oh, I didn't actually didn't show you that. While you're flying along, these sunglasses dangle and wave around. <laughs> In a very convincing manner, it has to be said. I haven't tried pulling this zip to see what happens. I don't think that's set up to do anything. But there you go. So that's the Wilga. I don't. Can we use the first aid kit? Can we? If we like bash ourselves on the a bad landing or something. <laughs> you can remove the yokes as per normal, but there's no real need in this aircraft because they don't get in the way. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Hopefully, you enjoyed that. And I'll see you again soon. So this was the, the Wilga from Got Friends in Microsoft Flight Simulator. See you soon.